Hey guys, what's up? Today we're gonna be doing a bit of a different type of video. Um, it's gonna be something along the lines of an Eidolon hunting build workshop guide thingy. I don't know how to call it, we'll see. Uh, basically, I'm just gonna talk about how to make Eidolon builds, what's important on each frame, uh, what our priorities are when we mod them, what our canes need to look like, our weapons if we need to, um, take those into account too, what we subsume, which auras to run, and so on. Um, I'll start from the beginner builds that we use in our beginner guides, then I'll move on to the more advanced builds that we use for duos, and in the end I'll do a quite big part on solo builds, because that's the main reason I'm doing this. I've been getting a shit ton of questions about solo build setups, how do I one-shot limbs in solo runs consistently, I can't seem to get enough damage, etc, etc, etc. So I'm hoping to cover all of that in one big video. This is actually the third time I'm trying to record this, so let's hope my recording doesn't corrupt this time, or I'm actually gonna lose it. Um, the beginner builds I'm gonna be covering on overframe, because I don't have the right format setups to fit them on any, any frame right now so over frame will have to do but that shouldn't matter because uh, it's not much different than the in-game screen anyways and we can see the same things so let's start with harrow in the beginner version um for harrow the most important thing you need to look at when you're creating a harrow build is the duration um for eidolon hunts we want the duration between 90 and 95 percent to make our total covenant duration slightly below 17 seconds. So you can see in vulnerability time and the critical chance time, if you add those two together, we're just about uh, below 17 seconds at 16.9 seconds. And that's pretty much perfect. That's what we want because an Eidolon limb takes exactly 17.2 seconds. So if we're slightly below that, then we can cast it every time. Um, once we have achieved this duration, in this case, I'm using uh, some duration mods, I'm using fleeting expertise and augur message basically to get not a nice number, so not a, a number that ends on a zero or five. Um, I achieve that with augur message and then fleeting for negative duration and then I just add some more duration to get to 94%. <clears throat> Once we have that, we just fill in with some efficiency to get the energy cost down to 25. Otherwise it's at 100, which is very expensive and I don't want to pad, so. Um, and because I don't want to pad, I'm also running dispensary as a subsume. And lastly, we just throw in some strength and some cast speed for quality of life. In the aura, it doesn't really matter what you run. I like sprint boost just because it makes you a bit quicker. You can also run whole stamp, you can run dead eye, you can run corrosive projection. Whatever you feel like really, doesn't really matter. Just run something that's at least remotely useful. And as an arcane, we're running arcane nullifier, just in case we fuck up and get uh, hit by a magnetic wave without being invulnerable, so we don't lose all of our energy. So yeah, that's Harrow. Moving on, Trinity. Trinity. Uh, the first that we're looking at always is power strength. We want to get at least 150% to get the damage reduction from blast to 75%. And then we're just filling out the build with as much duration as possible, as well as efficiency, because once again, bless is a fourth ability and it's very expensive, 100 energy cost base uh, baseline. So we want to get that down as much as possible with 175% to 25%. And once again, dispensary for basically infant energy, uh, sprint boost, once again, aura is pretty much uh, flexible, whatever you want, but I like sprint boost, especially on a lure handler, and preparation, just for some quality of life, so we don't need to pad ever. Yeah, that's pretty much it um, for Trinity. VS Vault. VS Vault mostly needs duration, at least 215%, I would say, 220%, something around the, those lines. Uh, this build has a bit more just to give us some leeway. 
This build also has insanely high efficiency because each shield costs 50 energy baseline. And we're using a lot more shields than we would be blessing or covenanting on Harrow or Trinity. So this would actually be a much higher energy cost than on those other two frames. So we need efficiency to get this energy cost down. Uh, with 175 efficiency, we're at 13 energy cost, which is very, very nice. Um, Aura is once again flexible. I'm running Deadeye here right now because, just to give my DPS player some more damage on his Rubico. But you can run pretty much whatever here. Um, and yeah... Lastly, preparation and flow for some quality of life. So we start the run with 600 energy completely full and probably never have to pad considering we're also running dispensary in this frame. So if the whole squad or if all VS players are running dispensary, there should be at least two of them active at all times, which basically gives us infinite energy orbs. And as with the other two frames, arcane modifier in the arcane slot. Lastly, our beginner DPS build. Um, DPS Volt needs a bit more um, and it's a bit less flexible when it comes to the mods. You need a lot of strength, at least 250% in my opinion. You need a lot of duration, around 200% or higher. You need Shock Trooper, which costs you one mod slot. You need Arcane Acceleration and Arcane Momentum, ideally, to buff up your Rubico, and then you also need survivability in the form of vitality and adaptation. Um, this basically prevents us from running any efficiency, or at least not very high efficiency. We could technically swap out August Secrets for some efficiency, but I'd rather have the strength. So we're running relatively low efficiency. That's the only downside. Um, but since we don't need to cast our abilities very often, it's not too big of a deal. And as I said, we have three VS players with dispensary, so energy shouldn't be an issue. And as a subsume, we have Eclipse, just for in infinite damage. And as an aura, we run Deadeye. Uh, once again, this is not really mandatory. You can run Sprint Boost, Holster Amp, Corrosive Projection, Energy Siphon, Adder Enemy Radar, whatever you want here. I just like that eye because it's it. I don't have to do anything and I always get the damage for free. So yeah, that's the beginner builds done. Let's look at some more advanced builds. I'll start off with, with VS Vault again. Um, the advanced VS Vault build looks relatively similar, yet very different from the beginner one. We're still running very high duration at 214% but we're running triple umbral mods intensify vitality and fiber um, and the only reason we're really doing this is just to get the 77 percent ability strength from intensify um, because we're actually running raw as a subsume here not dispensary because this build once you have at this build level we are assuming you're running a duo squad with a dps that runs a zenith and if the DPS runs a Zenith, having Roar for Water Shields is very nice, because otherwise the DPS needs to stack a shit ton of buffs to one-shot it. And this just makes it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, still the same. Still high efficiency because uh, to get our shield cost down. And preparation and flow are also still here for some quality of life. And additionally, because obviously we have it now, after start hunt hunting quite a bit, there's Arcane Energize which basically is our dispensary substitute. It gives us not quite as much energy as the dispensary, but it's still plenty, and we should never really struggle for energy with this build. Moving on to a DPS setup. The DPS setup looks um, in some ways very similar again. Again, triple umbral. This will be a staple in most Eidolon hunting builds. It makes you very tanky, gives you a lot of strength. It's just very nice. Um, but here we're actually running Holster Amp and Vic Swap. This is just to gain a lot of damage for Water Shields mostly, but also for Nell, uh, because Nell and Zenith just don't have as much base damage as a Sniper Rifle. So Vic Swap and Holster Amp are pretty much mandatory here. Um, we're still running very high strength, actually even more than before, because we have Triple Umbra now. And 
we're also running um, arcane nullifier and velocity as arcanes because we don't have a sniper rifle and non-sniper rifle primary arcanes are pretty shit. Uh, so we're running velocity to increase our nail fire rate to get faster limbs on average. And we're running nullifier to prevent getting hit by the mag wave because obviously in a dual squad we don't have a harrow. Um, the last mod at the bottom right here is a flex slot. I like streamline personally. You can also run rolling guard and replace the arcane nullifier with something else like um, arcane precision for example if you want to run a different secondary uh, that's not Nell, maybe Pandero. Um, but you can also run more strength here or whatever you want, really, more cast speed. So yeah, that's DPS uh, for Zenith and Nell. You can, there's obviously, you can, if you want to run Rubico, you just put in Rolling Guard and Rubico Arcanes. Rest of the build stays the same, but there's no really reason why you should still be running Rubico if you have access to this kind of build. So yeah. That's the squad builds done. I'm not gonna touch on squad builds too much more because I think they're pretty um, self-explanatory and not that complicated. So let's go to the build we're really here to look at, which is the solo build. This right here is the solo build I would currently recommend running. Um, Prime true footed, we don't get knocked by Vombalists, we don't get knocked by a lot of shit. It's very nice. There is some discussion right now whether Pain Threshold is actually better um, in very fast and highly advanced solo runs, but unless you're doing uh, sub-7 averages, I would just run Prime true footed. Um, prime, prime Flow just for more energy pool, Triple Umbral for tankiness and power strength. Some duration, some strength. As you can see, very balanced build. We have a lot of duration, a lot of strength, good efficiency still, and obviously Shock Trooper. Arcanes are energizing Nullifier right now. Um, I don't think there's any good options except maybe Guardian instead of Energize if you want to be even more tanky, but I never really have tankiness issues or survivability issues with this build, so I don't really see why you should swap that. Um, the Zenith build we're going to be assuming for all our damage calculations is this. So full damage with a CDMS ribbon with a negative. Um, no fire rate, so we're running double elemental mod and hammer shot. Instead of hammer shot, you could also run heavy caliber. Um, however, you don't need to, and I don't like the minus accuracy, so I'd rather run hammer shot. And it also fits my polarities better because I also have a depolarity Zenith Riven, so I need this depolarity. So yeah, let's look at some maths because I know everybody here loves maths. So we're gonna start with some damage calculations. Um, for anybody who's never used this website, this is the poepoe.org damage calculator. At this point, it's sadly slightly outdated because the developer is not updating anymore. However, with some minor workarounds, this is still a very, very good tool to use. And I'll show you how to use it, or at least I'll show you some basics. So our target here is a Eidolon Hydralis limb. Right now we're assuming a armor reduction with Vastalog of 144. This is, would be a perfect strip, as some people call it. Uh, 150 would be an overstrip, so no armor left into red health. And about 108 would be a normal strip. Um, we're going to look at all these scenarios in a second. Our buffs that we assume are 272% strength shock trooper and eclipse. The reason why we're assuming 272% and not 232 like we have in the build here, as you can see, 232 is because Madurai has a node called Sling Strength, which gives us re 40% power strength um, if we uh, chain, chain Void Slings before buffing ourselves. So that's the reason why I always, why we always add 40% damage, 40% uh, power strength to every calculations. The first workaround that I'm 
touched on earlier is this 50% power strength Rhino Raw here. This gives us 25% damage, which is equivalent to a damage blessing, um, because the damage blessing on this website is actually additive, which is not correct, as you can see. Damage blessing would give us plus 25% damage, but we actually need a 25% damage multiplier. So this is how we achieve that um, or in a slightly scuffed way. And then we obviously also have a vault shield because we're always shooting through vault shields in solos. An Eidolon Hydrolyslim has 117k HP, pretty much, and 73. Um, as you can see, here's our Zenith build. And with this setup, with a perfect strip of 144, we easily one-shot the limb uh, by doing about 142k damage if all three pellets hit, which they should. Um, this is actually slightly outdated. This should be Witch now. Um, but yeah, as I said, this website is not up to date anymore. It hasn't been up to date since, uh, for a while for a year now, so yeah. But the damage calculations are still correct, so as you can see, this dam this build gives us quite a bit of leeway. However, this does not actually assume holster MB yet. This is the build that we would have ran before uh, the Veilbreaker patch, so this build with Sprint Boost. And um, as you can see, I don't have anything like holster MB here but this would still give us enough damage. However, we do only a 108 armor reduction, which is would be a normal strip or a la just a lazier strip um, with less attention to detail than you would see would actually drop below the threshold. And that's why um, this build is not perfect. So let's move on to our second setup, which is also in one of the old setups without um hold stamp uh, i actually added this here just just to showcase something earlier but let's look at it without hold stamp first so this is a 316 percent strength setup which would uh which we would get if we replaced trend in fortitude with blind here 276 percent strength plus 40 percent strength is 316 percent um so yeah, this is how it would look like. As you can see here, I have a full overstrip at 150 base armor reduction. So this is basically the lazy setup. And as you can see, it's still one taps that, that way. Um, however, it's quite close, but it should be rather consistent. If you want to make sure that it is consistent, however, and I would recommend doing this if you run this build because Volt Speed got buffed, as I said. I would run a holster amp aura instead. Holster amp aura also does not exist on this website, so we have to make do with a very, very low chroma vex arm buff instead that we use as a substitute. As you can see, 60% damage right here. And this boosts our damage by almost 10k. And then it's a very, very comfy setup to and we you, you will always one shot like this. Um but yeah, as I said, this is just from the new patch. Now let's look at the setups I would actually recommend. There's two. There's either a full damage setup, which is this one. This one not only runs whole stamp, as you can see, the chroma buff, but or the, the chroma substitute, but also Vic swap um, instead of prime flow. So it would look something like this. And 232 strength, obviously, if you run chain sling, you can chain, chain sling strength, you can up this to 272. I just want to showcase it without, just to showcase how strong or how much damage this setup actually gives you. And even though the Eidolon is overstripped, which is the second worst case, the only situation where you have less damage than an overstrip is if you don't strip it at all. We're still doing 127k with a full shot with all three pellets, which means we're overkilling by 10k already. But let's say we're actually using our chain sling and we're going to 270 strength. All of a sudden we're doing uh, 51k per pellet or 150k total, which is a lot of overkill already, so which is very nice. 
And let's say we're not overstripping, but actually only stripping to about 108 armor reduction, which is a very normal value. Um, by the way, if you want to learn more about armor stripping, check out the Adlon wiki. We have a full in the breakdown of what setups to run for different armor strip values on different eidolons um, with different stances different ranks of shattering impact and so on but yeah if you run 108 strip which is very basic strip then all of a sudden we're at 60k per pellet so or at 170k for a full shot which is just crazy and this i didn't even mention yet we're also running vile acceleration here instead of hammer shot so we even we are able to slot some fire rate in and still easily one shot, even at overstrip. So yeah, this is one way of doing it. The other way is without vigorous swap, as I said, this is the build I would recommend. <clears throat> 272 strength um, and hole stamp and the aura. And then you can do basically any armor st strip. You can do 108 one shots 144 obviously one shots because it's the best possible setup and even 150 will still barely one shot so no matter what you do uh, this is with a full damage build again by the way no vile acceleration no matter what you do you will always one shot with this setup so as long as you don't forget to use your chain sling um, you're pretty much good to go Alternatively, you can just make sure not to overstrip. So let's say 108. 108 is a very safe strip. So even if you hit it once with a melee weapon by accident, it doesn't overstrip. Um, then you don't even need to run chain sling necessarily. Because this doesn't quite one shot, but because rap like usually does damage to the limb as well before the zenith hits. Um, this will probably still be enough. However, I would not recommend this. I would just recommend always or just getting used to chaining chaining slings before buffing yourself. And then you don't have this issue and then you're just easily one-shotting everything. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all like the damage calcs for the different builds. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of variation you can, you can do with these solo builds, right? As I said, full stamp. Oh, it's, it's gone now. Fantastic. Thank you, Warframe. This is probably the best way, in my opinion, the best way to do it is either this or in Streamline instead of Blow. I'm not sure which one I prefer yet. Um, but yeah, obviously you can, as I said, this, these slots are pretty much flex slots. Um, as long as you put some strength in them. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the advanced solo builds. I also made a beginner solo build just why not you know um this beginner solo build reaches about 244 percent strength 218 percent duration 105 percent efficiency with this setup it's kind of a counterbalance setup of different corrupted mods to um, balance each other out with some duration on top um i'm running arcing guardian instead of energies here because we don't have the triple umbra setup so we would be quite squishy otherwise but the arcing guardian should um should keep us alive com combined with the auger set mod or set bonus rather um and once again eclipse subsumed this this is the damage calculation for this build um right now this is at with chain sling let's remove the chain sling for now because it's a beginner setup uh as you can see one thing you could assume is rubico because a lot of people are running rubico at this point still um, Rubico will be the orange graph. As you can see, you don't even need the chain sling to one shot at overstrip. So we're assuming overstrip right now um, because it's just the easiest way of doing it. So yeah, Rubico will still one shot even without chain sling. Zenith, not quite. If you're, if you're, um, once you got used to chain slinging before buffing, this will be no issue anymore. Zenith will one shot even when it's overstripped. Uh, for Rubico, we're assuming 2x common multiplier, by the way, so almost nothing. Obviously, if you only have 108 strip, damage is not an issue anymore uh, with either weapon. And obviously, if you have a Rubico mo Riven, for example, it gets even easier. Uh, Zenith without Riven, I would not recommend. It's just, it's just too weak. Uh, the gun is just baseline. Uh, it doesn't have enough damage. It doesn't have enough 
anything really. So yeah, if you don't have a Riven, I would just run Rubico. Um, but yeah, this will be the solo build. I'll also um, link this in the video description so you can take a look at it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope this helps. I know this was quite a long and maybe tedious and confusing video. A lot of maths. Um, I hope it still helps. I hope it answers some questions. Um, if you still have questions, make sure to either leave them in the comments or just ask on Discord. And make sure to read the Eidolon wiki. And yeah, good luck in your hunts.